Hey guys, Tiny Bryson here. And I literally thought at one point I had a disability because my concentration was so scattered, I could not focus on anything. And what used to take me, for example, two hours to do in my workday would take me triple, if not sometimes, for example, even four times as long. And not just that, but 80% of the time, my mind, it just felt foggy, like at all times. And once I was done with my entire day, I couldn't appreciate what happened that day. And on top of that, I could barely tell you what actually happened that day. Now, I also noticed that I was spending around 70 hours on my phone per week. By the way, go to settings, screen time, it shows it to you on your iPhone. And to me, that literally almost made me wanna cry. And when I went ahead and I bought this book called Deep Work by Cal Newport, guess what? It took me literally like almost a month to get through the first chapter of it because I was so problematic when it came to my concentration. And every time I would start, I would be distracted by something else. To make this even a little bit more simple to understand, it felt, guys, that I would never have a moment of silence or just being bored because whenever I felt awkward with friends, whenever I felt like, oh, I have to wait in this line or have to basically wait to do this with, with the cooking or whatever it is, I always had to be distracted. I pulled out my phone all the time to be distracted and entertained at all times. And at the time, I didn't think this was a problem until I started to like basically notice the deficit in my mindset and my capabilities, okay? Now, when I read this book fully, which when I focused and concentrated took me like around five to seven days. I'm a slow reader, like 50 pages per day or so. But this book taught me some lessons that I will literally use for the rest of my life. And like I always do, I highly recommend you get this book. It's a great book. And in this video, I'm not just going to tell you, well, I think the book is great. I just told you the book is great. But I'm going to tell you a little summary from my opinion, from my view of what I think this book is most valuable about. And not just that, but also what things I've applied to my life to help me that I also got from this book at the same time. And yes, this book gives you a lot more productivity and it gives you your time back. It gives you more control. And you guys won't believe how much time I spend on my phone today. Remember, it was 70 hours before watch this video because i'm about to tell you in a few seconds or so but before i do make sure you go ahead and smash the like button on top of that if you're new here search the channel and hit the bell so you're notified every time i post a new video now the first thing is guys obviously i had a massive problem with my phone use and right now i can't show you my phone because i don't have it around me while i work i started to basically use this phone more as a tool and again i used to spend 70 hours on it but today I spent around four hours on a good day and five hours on a bad day. And the first hour use is whenever I'm at the gym using an app to actually coach me and everything like that. So in reality, it's more like three hours to four hours. And to me, that has been a massive change. But Tommy, you work on social media. That's true, right? I do the Instagram stuff. I do the YouTube stuff. But in reality, I'm not really using it to work. I'm using it for distraction. I'm not going to make an excuse here. And I noticed that with all of this not being on my phone thing, I have a lot more time to put into my videos, to put into my work and make a better piece of content. And this way, I don't feel foggy. And to me, that is awesome. And I don't want to feel foggy ever again. Same thing is, guys, I found more time in the same 24 hours, okay? So before, it kind of felt like I would kind of work out in the morning, then basically work at work until like 5 p.m. or 4 p.m., and then boom, I had like three hours and that can basically just stay awake doing whatever I want to do. I used to spend that time like on Netflix or on my phone again. And while I worked, also on my phone. <laughs> Everything was on my phone. But today, I started to notice that basically, in my 24 hours, I wake up at 4 a.m., I sleep by 8 p.m., but the amount of work I can get done now is around triple the amount, and I really mean that. I can read for around an hour and a half to two hours to three hours fully focused. I can do my work fully focused, locked in. I can do double the videos. I can do double of everything, and by the way, everything takes me a lot less time than it used to because I'm not constantly being distracted. So once I apply this entire principle of, hey, 
be focused, be in the moment, and I'll tell you more later, it actually changed my life drastically. And the third change that I noticed in myself also is that I have a shutdown period for work. So at a certain time, I'm not working anymore. And at a certain time, my leisure time starts. But to be honest, guys, I never had a problem with working. I love my work. I love what I do. Um, but I did have a problem with free time because I did not know what to do. And it's kind of weird, right? Because you know exactly what to do with your work. But when it comes to leisure time, a lot of people that spend like 80 hours to 50 hours a week just watching TV. And that's because they don't really know what to do with their leisure time. But now I plan out exactly, hey, here's what I want to do with the second part of my day. So my day is not over when I'm done working. No. That's done that part, but I have another part of my day where I say, hey, here's what I want to do with my free time. I might want to catch up on some anime. I might want to do a puzzle. I might want to read some fiction. I might want to call some friends and family to maintain relationships. I might want to do something else, but I'm not just on social media looking at who's pregnant, who's not pregnant, who has this, who has that. That part is done, eliminated. And the fourth lesson that I learned is that basically I learned that social media is not really your friend and it's not really as useful as people kind of tell you like you need social media to be connected you need it for this but a lot of those relationships they're very weak they're very fragile they're not really serious relationships honestly and the ones that are basically really serious and really valuable are the ones in real life and by being here in social media you don't really appreciate those and dedicate the time that you actually need to dedicate to it and when i think about social media today i think about it as hey this is a product created by a private company, right? And their goal is to get my attention, to learn more about me, so they can basically sell that information to advertisers. And when I look at it like that, it becomes more, hey, every time I'm on this thing and I think I'm being entertained and it's all fun and games, like, no, I'm just being used basically. And I don't really like that feeling. So my use of social media has gone down significantly and it has not affected my work, even though I do work on social media, mostly YouTube though. Now, those are the four main changes that I have seen in my life. And again, I'm a lot more productive. I'll tell you more of the how later in this video, but I'm a lot less foggy. I'm a lot more focused. I'm a lot more intentional. And I get a lot of things done by just not being distracted all the time. And I have become anti, um, what's this word that everybody uses? I can multitask, right? I'm anti-multitask. I don't multitask. I do one task at a time and I get a lot more things done. Before, I'll be social media, watching a video here and doing my work here. And guess what? I was not really doing much. But now when I'm working, I'm working. When I'm leisuring, I'm leisuring. And that's basically it. That's the idea. Lock in and focus at all times. And by the way, this has made me predominantly a better runner, but that's for another video potentially on another channel, who knows? Because this video is about money and this book review. Now, here are the seven takeaways that I did get from this book overall. The first takeaway is consider quitting social media overall. Now, social media seems to be like a powerful tool today, but just try this for a second. Go on a social media hiatus, basically you quit it, you're done with it for 30 days. And don't announce it, don't tell anyone you're quitting, and see exactly how your life actually is in those 30 days that you're not basically on social media. And people that need to get in contact with you, they can contact you through WhatsApp, or by calling you, or texting you, so that's not really an excuse. But I need to keep up to date with everything in the world. What are you gonna do about it, right? Just quit social media for 30 days and see how your life actually is. If your life seems to be better, then quit it altogether. If you feel like, oh my gosh, I really do need this stuff, then you can go back on it, but make sure you have your eyes on it. Honestly, I don't like it. And for me, working in social media, for example, my big thing is when I work in social media, actual work, because it's hard not to consume that product, it's so, it's so addictive, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna have two phones. My girlfriend just switched phones, so I told her, hey, give me your old phone, and I'm gonna use that phone for my Instagram, my social media stuff. And whenever I use that phone, it's for work. Whenever I use my regular phone, it's for regular stuff, okay? But this way, everything's separated and not put together. Now, the second takeaway that I got from this book is basically track your deep work hours. Now, a deep work hour is pretty simple. It's you dedicating your time 
to something that is actually valuable and is actually going to make progress in your career or in your life in some way. That's the idea. So the idea is you wanna track these hours and also set goals. So for example, right now, what I do is I go on interval training for my mind. It's kind of crazy, right? But it works. And I say, I'm gonna basically lock in to deep work for 90 minutes and then I'm gonna rest for five minutes. And when I say rest, this is why I used to feel burnt out sometimes because when I meant rest, I was actually like watching the video, but you're using your brain for that. So what I do is whenever I'm resting, honestly, I go on the floor and I just basically lay there for five minutes with an alarm with my eyes closed and that's basically it. When the five minutes are done, I feel a lot more rested than I would have by resting on doing something on social media, answering messages. That's not resting at all. You want to rest completely. That has helped me a lot. And my goal is to get to at least three to four intervals every single day. So that would be around six hours of focus and around 20 minutes of rest. But I do say five minutes, but sometimes if I feel a lot tired, Depending on the light before, I might do 15 minutes, but 15 minutes is usually my max. 90, 15 or 95 is what I usually do. So track your deep work hours, have goals in mind, and basically track them at all times. That's awesome, trust your boy. Now, the third takeaway I found out basically from this book has been set a schedule for every minute of your day. And I think a lot of people think that a schedule kind of bounds them and they're not able to actually be free and their freedom is so important. A schedule tells you how to do the things you want to do. So if anything, it liberates you to have the ability to do what you want to do. That's the idea. And this schedule, when it comes to, hey, track every minute, he says do it in 30 minute um, increments, right? So 30 minutes for this, then this, then this, and this. And obviously some tasks are gonna require more than 30 minutes, so you basically block out that time for that. And my big thing was basically, whenever I made a schedule, I always felt like, well, what if it changes or things aren't perfect that day, do I throw it away? He said, hey, don't do that. Um, what you wanna do is, if you have a certain block for something, but something pops up, you put that in the schedule. And then you resume the schedule once you're done with that task, but you always stay on schedule. That way you can be a lot more focused and get done what you need to get done. To me, this has been awesome. And one big thing I started doing is basically, I have my to-do list with my main tasks, right? The ones that would actually give me something out of life. Then I also, after the day I have, for example, a what have I done list, right? So what did I accomplish with those hours? And then at nighttime, sometimes I might journal and say, hey, how was the day? How did you feel? And it kind of helps me be more present in the moment and everything like that. So schedules, awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, the fourth takeaway that I got from this book has been have a cutoff time for work. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've watched a lot of Gary Vee and it kind of feels like you just work all the time at all times. And people tend to exaggerate these things. There are actually studies that show this, that people that say, I work 16 hour days, they actually don't. I actually don't, okay? That's the truth. But the main goal is that after a certain time, I say I'm done with work, I'm not answering emails, I'm not thinking anymore about those things, and I'm just basically laid back in leisure, and that's just as important as actually working. It's kinda like when you work out. Working out is great, but your rest periods are also great. Same thing with work. Working at a certain time is great, but then cutting it off to actually let your mind rest without answering calls, answering emails, being so available. All these things is also very important. And it also makes you a better husband, better parent, better friend, better of everything, honestly, because it allows you to just have separation in your life. And that has helped me out tremendously. And one big thing is that has helped me too, and the author said this too, is that most people that are used to working throughout the entire day, they kind of feel like I'm gonna miss out on so many things, right? And I left so many things undone. What you should do is after your work day is over, write down the things that you actually need to get done and say how you're gonna get them done the next day. And that way you're not thinking about them anymore because you have a plan to actually get to them the next day. Again, this book is so phenomenal with so many strategies to actually help you out a lot. Now, the fifth, um, takeaway that I got from this book was actually say no to shallow work and avoid it and put it into blocks. So what is shallow work? Shallow work are basically tasks that, you know, and I took a PhD workshop 
And this professor told me, Tommy, um, shallow work is like what we call in the academic field, um, work. That's what I call it, work. You know why? Because it's kind of like work that you do, but it doesn't really give you anything whatsoever. And I was like, you're not supposed to say that. She was like, I'm going to say whatever I want to say, okay? And it's very true. So answering emails, going to all these meetings, doing all this stuff doesn't really result in anything. That's shallow work. Having, um, you know, so for me, what I've done is I've cut out most of those things, just cut them out all together. And the things that I do have to really get done that are shallow, I block out time for those shallow tasks. But when I'm actually working on deep tasks, deep work, I focus on those deep activities. And one big thing is for those people that have, for example, um, a regular knowledge work, like job, like nine to five, a lot. I, I remember this, um, this, this person that I knew. And this person had a job where every day there was a meeting and the meetings would last like an hour to two hours, sometimes three hours. And it was like, you can't get done the work that actually matters. And I was kind of like, that's kind of crazy. But I didn't have a solution to offer back then. But today I would be like, hey, talk to your boss, show him or her the information and ask, hey, this is the work that I have to go deep on because I have to get these tasks done to actually improve the bottom line of the business. And here are the things, the shallow work that I'm actually doing. So what percentage is it supposed to be for me here? So I can actually get more done, but also take care of this like um, laundry list of tasks here. And sometimes what happens is the boss will tell you, hey, you need to say no to a lot more of these things, not attend these meetings, not attend this, not answer emails right away to be able to get done a lot more work because that's actually what's going to improve our bottom line. But some bosses might tell you, hey, um, you need to be available at all times. And that might just give you a hint to say, hey, this is probably not the job for me. And I might be one of looking for another position that actually appreciates someone that goes deep and gets done what helps the company, right? That's important stuff. Now, the sixth takeaway that I got from this book is you have to commit to being different. You know, Bill Gates is different. Warren Buffett is different. All these like amazing people that have done amazing things in our society, they're very different. And by standard, they're usually pretty weird because I think Warren Buffett spends like eight hours a day just purely reading and researching. Bill Gates used to basically sit down writing code fall asleep of exhaustion, wake up, and then write some more code. Am I telling you to do that? The answer is no. But the idea is that these people are weird and they thrive for getting things done. And when you want to get things done, you're going to have to say no a lot of the times and you're going to have to do things differently. So you're not going to be the person that's on social media, like in every post. You're not going to be the person answering every single email. You're going to be the person at all times you're available. You have to protect your time and that is going to make you a lot better at your craft. And to me, this idea changed me forever. Committing to being different because average kind of sucks. Now, the seventh and last lesson that I took away is actually phenomenal. And it's that the only life worth living is a deep life. Because when you have a deep life base, whenever you're working on your craft, you're super focused on it. And it makes it feel a lot more fulfilling. That's awesome. And then when you're with your family, you're super focused on them and they feel a lot better about it. And you feel a lot better about it. When you're working out, you're focused on the games, getting better. And that's awesome. When you are having free time and you plan it, you look forward to these things, right? So for me yesterday, I didn't have a plan for my, for my, for my leisure time. And I kind of spent the day just basically on basically Netflix, honestly. But today I said, Hey, I have this puzzle here. Let me do that puzzle. Then after that, let me read this book, which by the way, it's um, The Wife Project. I think it's called The Rosie Project. And I just started reading that book. It's, it's also fiction. And then after that, let me catch up with some anime. But this way, I know what I'm going to do with my free time. And that gives me an idea of what to do. I also call my friends, obviously, my family, my girlfriend, right? Because all those relationships actually matter. But being on social media, liking something, being on a little, little TikTok, watching something for seven minutes and then basically saying, I'm getting, I'm being educated here and not remembering anything, it kind of sucks, honestly. Um, overall, guys, that's it for this video. This book, honestly, has changed my life. It really has. And as long as I keep living by these principles, I really do believe that I'm going to be a much better individual by living by this entire focus mindset. But thanks for watching, guys. Again, 
I highly recommend you get this book. And by the way, if you want to get this book for free, the audio version, go ahead and get it. One big thing that I've noticed is that I read in the mornings when I'm in the gym and it's usually just to like, I have to read a book like five to 10 times to lock it in. But whenever you read a book physically, it really is a lot easier. It's harder to focus, but it's a lot easier to remember. So as you read, have a notebook next to you so you can write things down and set aside some time and a space so you're not gonna be distracted and get used to putting your phone on do not disturb and don't have electronics around you when you're gonna get things done because every time you lose focus, I think it takes 27 minutes or 17 minutes to actually recover back to the same level of focus that you had before. So it kind of sucks. One little beep and you're done. You're done. But thanks for watching, guys. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you're notified. Comment down below any questions. Um, and by the way, let me know, like, have you ever felt like that? Like foggy? Like you don't really remember much? Like it's very hard for you to focus? Like you can't read a book because, oh my gosh, it's so hard. It's, it's all about like endurance, honestly. But comment down below, let me know. And as always, if you want to watch more content like this, here's a video. If you want to follow me on Instagram, follow me there. I probably um, will respond. But at a certain time because I'm not on there every single day now. On top of that, here is what? Uh, my face, click and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And as always, long-term team out.